Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Terra Onion Mode. This is a optical drive emulator for both the Saturn and the Dreamcast. Uh, you can only install it in one at a time, of course, so if you want to use it on both, you might want to buy two. And what this does is it basically emulates an optical drive, but you can use uh, flash media with it, whether it's a uh, solid state hard drive or a USB drive or an SD card. And you can load up all your games on this device and then load them off the original hardware. So if your optical drives are failing or you want to try out some homebrew games, you can do that with this. And what's nice about this device, especially on the Saturn, is that it will let you do this, first of all, uh, without any modification or soldering but it will also let you play games from other regions without having to do any modifications for region locking either. It's a really slick little device that's been working quite well. And in today's video, we're going to install it in both the Dreamcast and the Saturn, and we're gonna look at how it works in both of these consoles. So that's the plan with this. Now I am live streaming this as I record it, so this video might be longer than my usual ones, but I'm gonna put chapter markers into the video that you can find uh, on your player as well as in the video description so you can jump to specific parts of this as we work our way through this. And we're going to get into it here in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and check out the Terra Onion mode. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, this device allows you to connect up three different storage devices and you can use two of them. Uh, so right here is your SATA connector. We're going to slide a solid state drive into this in a little bit for the demo. Uh, you also have the ability to use a USB drive and you could run an extension cable out of your console, for example, if you wanted to be able to quickly uh, swap disk images on and off the uh, the, the stick because it's really hard to get at this once it's inside the console. Uh, you also have an SD card slot here for plugging that in. Now there's a lot of different parts on the board here and what you use will vary based on what system you have. So the Saturn is going to be a little bit more complicated than the Dreamcast to install. You've got two different connectors here depending on the system, the uh, revision of the system that you're plugging in. And there's a bunch of different power connectors here also, again, depending on which version of the Saturn you have. I found the Dreamcast was super simple. There is just a single connector here that uh, this needs to get seated onto after you remove the optical drive and you're good to go there. So let's get the Saturn out of the way here for a few minutes and we will install it in my Dreamcast. Now, before I started shooting the video, I did remove my optical drive already just for the sake of time. Um, so it wasn't that hard. It's a couple of screws, you pull it out and then you'll be exactly where we are here. So let's get this set up and we'll start with the Dreamcast. All right, so our Dreamcast, as I mentioned, has already been taken apart and it was very easy again to get that optical drive out. And all we're gonna have to do is place the mode down on this connector. Now they do have a great uh, set of documentation that you can download and this will give you a step-by-step -step guide as to how you get that optical drive out. Uh, but again, the Dreamcast here really is the easiest uh, of them all, and it looks like it'll work with any revision of the Dreamcast as well. Uh, you do, of course, want to make sure that you don't have it plugged in when you do this, uh, because we are going to be installing hardware in our Dreamcast. Now, on mine here, I did put down some of these uh, little standoffs that it came with, but I'm not going to remove the sticky stuff here, because I do intend on pulling this out in a few minutes and putting it uh, into our uh, Saturn. So what I'm going to do actually before I put this together is, at, is install the hard drive into the SATA slot here. And I want to show you uh, what I configured on that drive. So the configuration is super simple. Uh, what you need is a Dreamcast folder and a Saturn folder, and then you can put your disk images inside of it. Uh, this supports CDI and GDI disk images, and you want to put those into separate folders. And a lot of these games were games that I owned when the Dreamcast was a thing. Believe it or not, my Dreamcast here is still working pretty well, even with its optical drive, but I think it's gonna work better now uh, when I install this in there. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now there's one other file that you'll see here. Uh, this is the latest firmware update that I downloaded from their website. So whenever there's a new firmware, uh, you just have to download that and put it on the root directory of your storage device and it will find it uh, and install the latest firmware on there. And I'm guessing there's going to be features added over time as well. 
Uh, and one of the things that's really exciting about this is that there is an FPGA and an expansion port on here. So I think we're going to start seeing additional features uh, happening down the road. All right, so let's get the uh, hard drive detached. We're going to put it inside the card here, and then we'll boot the Dreamcast up. All right, so now we're going to take out our hard drive here and pop it into uh, the SATA connector. And again, you have a choice, but I'm going to go with the SATA drive here because eventually what I'll probably do is get a large SATA one terabyte drive just to leave in the console. And you could probably fit a good chunk of the library there. And then all we need to do is get this connector here lined up with the connector on the board. And that is pretty much the entire installation. It's really that simple. Now, normally you'd want to screw everything down and get the sticky stuff going. Um, but for our purposes right now, we're just going to get this seated and uh, kind of move on from there. I did find the standoffs to be a little difficult to work with as far as getting things to fit in the case properly, but uh, you do have to kind of coax it into place there. But once it's in, it's in, and you want to make sure your hard drive is in place. And again, you probably want to screw that hard drive down just to keep it from moving around on you. But it looks like we are good to go. I'm going to put the top of the case back on, and then we're going to power the system up and see how it all works. So let's get it going. All right, so we've got the Dreamcast hooked up. Let's hit the power button on it and get things going. I should mention I'm using this uh, cheap pound cable just to get things captured for the video, and it's kind of a dimmer output that I would like, so it's not the most uh, ideal way to get your Dreamcast connected. My plan with these is actually to hook them back up to my CRT television upstairs. Uh, which is kind of the natural way to play these consoles. Uh, and this is the mode interface. Now remember, we had those Dreamcast games already loaded up uh, on that hard drive, and it's found them all here. And we're going to load up a game in a second. But I wanted to do first, though, is go through the options screen. And you might be hearing my noisy fan on the Dreamcast as well, because it has uh, seen better days. Uh, so right now I've got the game uh, list mode in list, but I could change it to cover art, and they actually have a database that will be available that you can download to get a much more attractive layout of these games. And if you've used some of these uh, flash cartridges in the past, you know that they're often limited by the power of the system they're connected to. Uh, but with the Dreamcast and Saturn being more advanced systems, you can have a fancier interface as a result here. Um, we have the auto region patch set to on, and what we're going to do in a minute is I'll show you a Japanese game that we can load up on this American Dreamcast without any modification. Uh, you also have the ability to uh, apply the auto VGA patch, and that's going to be very useful for me at the moment because this pound cable basically emulates the VGA adapter for the Dreamcast, and there were a number of games that would not work with the VGA adapter attached. And this will apply a patch to make them work, although it's a bit iffy as to whether or not the game will work with the patch, but that's built right into the hardware, which is awesome. Uh, GD-ROM Seek Time, I have it set to on at the moment, but I'm going to switch it off just to uh, show you the speed of this thing, um, because it can emulate the actual time it took for the drive to find things on the disk in case the game is very sensitive to that timing. I have the read speed of the drive set to maximum, again, just to get the best performance. But if you're seeing games that are uh, not behaving properly, you can adjust that uh, here in the menu. Now, these next two options relate to the reset button that is inside the machine here. There's actually two buttons on the card, and one of those buttons is a reset button. And these settings will determine what happens when those buttons are pushed. Uh, you can also boot into the Dreamcast BIOS here if you want. Uh, so if you did want to get in there to manage memory and stuff, you can select that option to do that. And then Check Update will install the firmware file that we had put on the drive. But since we are on the current firmware now, uh, we don't need to do that. Uh, so let's just load up a game now. And what I'm going to do here is load up Propeller Arena. Uh, this was a game that wasn't released. It was due to be released in 2001, and then they uh, decided not to release it uh, after 9-11 because it involves airplanes and buildings. Uh, but the game was totally done. It got leaked out there at some point, and uh, somebody, of course, imaged it and put it up on the internet. And we're just going to let this boot up here. And you can see it does seem to load up pretty quickly here versus what it might on a regular disk drive. It's still going to be a bit slow because of the I.O. related to the fact that this is a 20-year-old system. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do here is just get started. I don't have my uh, memory here, so we just have to uh, start off without one. But we're going to let the uh, game load up here. And again, I'm not pleased with the 
dull output of this pound cable. Um, so hopefully your screen will look a little better than this. And we could not get the pound cable to interact with my capture hardware here either. So we're going to be a little bit dimmer than uh, I would otherwise like. Um, so let's just go into a quick little thing here. And what I'll do is a quick jump cut so that you can see the gameplay. Okay, so here is the first battle and you can see it all is working great here. This was a really cool game, uh, something that I've really enjoyed playing uh, even in these modern times. It's actually a really fun uh, shooting game here. You just basically go after other uh, aircraft similar to yours and try to shoot them down and they're coming after you as well. Uh, pretty cool stuff here. Let me see if I can get into this uh, behind this plane here. It actually has a really cool mode when you get on somebody's tail that you can see a pretty neat cinematic when you take them down. Um, but this is just one of the games that works. And this is a great example as to why you might want something like this because this game just does not exist as a physical thing that you can purchase. Alright, so here we go. We got that uh, lock on there and you can see how that works. And Perfect, it's working just fine. All right, next I wanna load up an import game. Remember, we've got a US Dreamcast here with a Japanese game now, Ikaruga, one of my favorite shooters. And we're going to just hit the button here to load that up. And because this will do all the region settings for us, we can get that game loaded uh, without the need for any kind of additional modification beyond the removal of the optical drive and the installation of the card that we just put in here. And as you can see here, it is loading. It's telling us it's loading. We've got uh, Japanese text on screen. They certainly wouldn't sell this game in the U.S. without English on it. So here you go. And it all seems to be working pretty nicely. And I have noticed that it does feel a little bit snappier than my optical drive felt. Um, the, both of these games were games that I were play, was playing before on optical media. And it does feel like it's, it's loading just a little bit quicker. And again, I have those settings set at their maximum. And if I started to notice things not working properly, um, I could revert those settings and have it more closely emulate the drive speed of the original. But as you can see here, everything seems to be working great. And when I hook this back up to my CRT upstairs, I'm going to have a very good experience, I think, uh, playing both U.S. Uh, and Japanese titles and even European titles if I wanted to install some of those as well. And there's a lot of stuff that never made it to these shores on the Dreamcast. So this is one of these systems that you can really spend a lot of time exploring. So now I want to take a game that doesn't work with a VGA cable and load it up using the mode because it can patch the game through its hardware to get it to work and have it ignore the fact that we have uh, one of these adapters installed. Again, we've got the pound adapter here that uh, is converting that VGA to HDMI. Uh, NBA Showtime is the game we're going to load up and this would never get too far. Like you'd get to the initial screen here and then right after the game kind of started loading, it would tell you that it wasn't compatible with the VGA. And as you'll see here, as it begins to load up, uh, we can get a little further than we could before with it. So let's let this uh, load up here. Now, typically this is about where I would get that warning message and, and it basically would not load until I plugged it into a CRT or S video source. Uh, but as you can see here, we are getting into the game. Uh, my only issue with NBA Showtime is that although I can get to the menus to start configuring my team and everything, I can't get farther than that. What happens is, is that it, it basically locks up as it's loading the screen for the uh, actual gameplay. So I think this is going to get fixed as they keep tweaking the firmware. Uh, these, bio, these patches for VGA are, are sometimes a little problematic on certain games, but given that we've got that FPGA on board, I think they can probably uh, work out individual issues for individual games as things roll forward here. But as you can see, we can get a lot further uh, in NBA Showtime than we otherwise would. All right, now it's time to move on to the Sega Saturn. And one of the things that I realized as we started taking it apart is that I actually lucked out because I have one of the very early models of Sega Saturn. And as a result, the installation process for me, because this is an early model, uh, was super simple. And I was going to do a whole play-by-play -play as to how to get the Saturn installed. Uh, but because my experience is likely going to be very different than what it might be for a bulk of Saturn owners out there, I'm going to refer you over to Terra Onion's YouTube page where they do have some videos showing different Saturn installation scenarios and also the manual that's really helpful for this because I was able to get this installed uh, with my fumbling <laughs> probably in about 20 or 30 minutes or so. So my experience, again, is not going to mirror yours, but it was super easy. Um, do read the manual, though, because there are some things that you could potentially screw up both with your mode or with your Saturn. 
Um, so I do really suggest you take your time and really look at what you're doing just to be safe. Uh, but again, mine was easier because it is one of the early models. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is get the power supply reconnected and we're going to boot this up and see how it works. All right, here's the moment of truth. We're going to hit the power button here and hopefully nothing uh, smokes here. And uh, here we go. looks like we are up and running. I don't have a battery installed in my Saturn at the moment, so we're just going to have it be the good old days of 1994. Uh, now, as I'm live streaming here, I've got some really helpful folks in the chat who are letting me know that the uh, Saturn menu for the mode right now is 480i, but the games will be 480p. So if you see some flickering on screen, it's just due to that. Uh, but as you can see here, the uh, menu is loading up just like it did before. It actually looks pretty similar to what it looks like on the other system. And I'm just gonna hit the C button here to jump into the options. And you can see we've got a similar option for the game listing. I'm gonna keep the auto region patch on. We're gonna try a couple Japanese games in a few minutes. Uh, it's going to disable the lid switch because we do have the ability to push one of those onboard buttons to swap disks out. Uh, I've got mine set to NTSC for the video mode. If you've got a PAL console, obviously you would select something different. We have those two reset options. We can boot to the BIOS menu. And then again, if we had firmware to install, uh, we would do that here. It looks as though when you install the firmware on one system, it will apply it to the other as well. So, so far here, so good. Uh, so let me go back and let's load up a game. Uh, let me start with a little holiday cheer here. Let's do uh, Christmas Nights Into Dreams and we'll see how it all loads up. And there we go, our Saturn uh, splash screen is splashing and we'll let it uh, come, come up here and see what happens. My output here is a little dim. It just could be my video capture hardware that we're using. So definitely ignore that. Um, we'll set the date and time to uh, 96, that's fine. And let's see what happens. All right, so here we go. The game is up and running. It loaded up without too many issues. We had the FMV going at the outset here and it seems like we've got uh, the ability here to play Saturn games just off of that SSD that we have installed. Pretty cool stuff. Let's check out some other things. All right, so now we're going to load up a popular title, Daytona USA. And I'm just going to hit the button here on my controller to load it. And I'm just going to let this run out uh, so you can see exactly how long things take to load, especially if you have experience with uh, these Sega devices and optical media. Uh, now, what I have it hooked up to right now is a RetroTINK 2X line doubler uh, with HD RetroVision cables. Uh, the HD RetroVision cable I'm using is the one I was using with my Sega Genesis, but they sell an adapter cable, and it gives you a super clean image, as you can see here. Uh, we boosted up the gamma on my video capture hardware, so it's a little bit brighter than it was before. But it just looks great, and when I go back upstairs to my CRT television, uh, this is going to look super crisp on that TV. But you can see here things load up pretty quickly and it's working just as well as it would with optical media. Good stuff. All right, so now let's take a look at a title from overseas. I've got a Japanese game we're going to load up here. This is uh, The Game Paradise. It's one I read about. I was very interested in. And this is a U.S. Saturn, but if I hit the button here, uh, we should be able to load it right up without having to solder on any modifications or do anything, really. It should just come up and load. So I'm just going to let this run out just like it uh, would normally in real time here so we can just see how fast the load times are. And hopefully this Japanese title will start playing here on my US Saturn. And what's great about this is that I've had this Saturn for so long and I've been meaning to do some kind of modifications to it so I could play uh, some more of these games and I never got around to it. So the fact that uh, this thing was so easy for me to install, really made this uh, a very attractive option. I'm probably going to have to buy two of these things, or at least buy another one, uh, to have one in my uh, Dreamcast and one in my Saturn now. And we'll go ahead here and just start a quick game and see how this is all working. But so far, so good. I think this is working pretty nice. And you can see the real power of this, because um, I don't think there really has been a decent drive emulator for the Saturn that was this easy to install. Um, so I'm just really, really, really pleased. All right, so let's let the game load up here. And I, I bet you this load time is significantly shorter than it normally would be otherwise. There you go. Cool stuff. I have a cousin that speaks uh, very fluent Japanese, so I'm gonna have to invite him over when he's back in, in the country and uh, have him translate for me. <laughs> but as you can see here, all is good. Good stuff. Well, I'm really happy here. This is a great um, product, I think. 
Uh, and I think once again, uh, Terra Onion has shown us just how good they are at making very complex things easy for those of us who are not so great at soldering uh, to get these old systems doing things that they were not doing uh, just a couple of weeks ago, actually. So this was a really nice surprise to see this product announced. Um, really nice to finally be able to use my Saturn a little bit more. I just had a couple of games, so I'm eager to start diving into the library, especially some of the Japanese titles that I've never played with. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos about some of the great things on the Saturn, and that's something I'm really eager to try out. Uh, the one issue I would say with this is that it's certainly not a portable product. Um, so I've got mine installed in the Saturn right now. I could you know, leave the screws out and just lift the thing up and uninstall it and reinstall it someplace else. But I think if you are intending to use this with both uh, the Dreamcast and the Saturn, you probably want to buy two uh, just to leave them in their respective consoles. But it's nice to know it, you could you know, move one to the other and be able to boot it up in either system. And the, uh, the mode here just detects what system it's in and it just gets going. There's really nothing to configure on it. And I think that's one of its greatest strengths. So good stuff here from Terra Onion. Uh, we previously looked at their Mega SD cartridge for the Sega Genesis that also replicated a Sega CD right on the cartridge. So this is some really good stuff from a company that's been cranking out some really cool things for all of these 90s consoles. And we'll have to see what they do next with this. I'm really interested to see what they might do with the expansion capabilities that they built into the mode. So we'll definitely be coming back to this in the future. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.